Hey guys, Steve Harris here with Muse Themes. We have a new widget ready for you today called the Google Calendars widget. And this is a great little widget that allows you to embed your public Google Calendar directly in your website. So as you can see here on our demo, if we scroll down a little bit, we have this Google Calendar embedded. And of course we have controls for mousing back and forth through days. And if we click on a day, it actually loads up the event view within the Google website. We can also change the view of the calendar from monthly or weekly or daily there. And we can of course change styling options like fonts and background colors and that sort of thing. So it's really super simple to set up. All you really need is your Google Calendar ID, which I'll show you how to find in this video. And it'll only take you a few minutes to embed your calendar in your site. So let's jump into Muse and I'll show you how this works. Okay, so first as always, let's drag the widget out onto the page. So once you've dragged the widget out on the canvas here, the big thing you need to pay attention to is the size of the frame. So we're not gonna get an in-app preview of the calendar, unfortunately, it needs to load in the browser to do that. However, the calendar will fall within the size of the frame that you place in Muse. You can also force a specific height within the widget by just changing a setting in the panel, which I'll run through in a second here. So as the widget is right now, drag and drop out on the page there. If I preview this in the browser, we can see that it falls exactly where we placed it, but it's a little bit taller than we expected. And this is because I haven't forced that maximum height. So let's run through the panel options here. And the first thing we'll need to know is the Google Calendar ID. So as you can see, we just have an ID here for a generic kind of holidays calendar. So where do you find this ID? Well, if you log into your Google Calendar account, then on the left-hand side here, you see it says my calendars and below that is usually your name or depending what calendar you have there. In the drop down beside that, it says calendar settings. When you click on the calendar settings, there is an area here that says calendar ID. Now in this case, it's just my email address. However, this can vary depending of course on the type of calendar that you've set up. It also says the address for your calendar. No one can use this link unless you've made your calendar public. So just make sure that you've set your calendar as public before you're using it on your website. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave kind of the demo one that we have in here. And let's run through some of the display settings. So these are all fairly obvious. We have a default view. So this can be the month, week, or day view that I showed earlier on the demo site. We can of course turn on and off any of these buttons for displaying those various views. We can turn off the previous and next buttons. And lastly in this section, this is where we enforce that maximum height. So let's say for example, I wanted this calendar to fill a 300 pixel tall area. Well, let's turn on enable maximum height. And let's just set this pixel value at 300. Now, if I preview this in the browser, you can see that it stays within that 300 pixel area and a scroll bar just appears on the right. The next section below is some of the styling controls. So in the header area, this is actually just kind of the top part of the calendar. We can change the font. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the font throughout to Montserrat. We can change the header font color. I'll just leave that at black for now. Actually, you know what, let's go with gray. The font size, I'll drop it down to 18, and the font weight will leave at normal. Now below that, we have the actual calendar styling. So this is where you're going to set up some of these elements. Let me jump back in the demo like this. This is the current date background. This is an event background and the text hover color. That's what you're setting up in that area. So in terms of options for that, we have the event background color. So that's the specific event on that particular day and what the background is. Right now it's set to orange, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as that. We have the event border color, this is set at this kind of blue. Let me just change that to white for now. I'm gonna match up the font to the rest of the site, which is Montserrat. Then we have the event text color. Well, this is going to show up on the event background color. So I'm gonna leave this set as white as well. Now we have the event text hover color. Let's leave that as white, or you know what? Let's just go with a little bit of a gray there. And we have the event text visited color. So if you've already clicked on it, I'm gonna set that back to white because I don't want that kind of purple showing up on the orange. Lastly, we just have the current date background color. So this is what the day that it actually is in your calendar is going to show up highlighted as. And I'm gonna set this to gray as well, there. So let's go ahead and preview this in the browser and see how it looks. Okay, so you can see all the styling changes have applied. We've got Montserrat as our font. We've got the current date background as gray. These are looking much better now that we have the white on orange and that hover color may need to be adjusted, but of course we can do so very easily. 
So that's a quick overview of the Google Calendar widget. As you can see, super simple to set up, a really nice little tool for sharing public calendars or event schedules. I think this is gonna be a great one for smaller businesses and it's actually a, a widget that we've had highly, highly requested for quite a while now. So best of luck working with this. If you have any questions or concerns with it, don't hesitate to give us a show. Thanks again and cheers.